Hey YouTube, it's your beekeeper. Here we are in another installment of what I'm going to do here to this Yamasaw gas tank. I'm cleaning it right now with some rubbing alcohol. That's my uh, my go-to grease and wax remover. I've hit the welds with a flapper disc. I like the way they came out. I think they're pretty good. But just to be sure, I'm using this JB Weld steel stick. It says right on here, it's safe for use for gasoline and diesel fuel tanks. I have used this stuff before in some pretty sketchy situations with gasoline and haven't had any problems with it. I really like the way the welds came out. I think they're good, but I haven't put any liquid in the tank. I didn't even air test it. I'm just going, and I'm probably, this is probably going to bite me in the butt, but I didn't even pressure test the tank. But I, I'm pretty confident the welds are good. And I'm also pretty confident that um, the addition of this steel stick, two-part epoxy, is going to take care of uh, any pinhole that may be there. Work it really well in with my fingers. I use a brass brush. I've used um, rubbing alcohol and everything to make sure that those welds are super, super clean. So this stuff really will get in there. And I'm pressing it into the welds in every little nook and cranny um, to, to try to give it a good, a good source of, of adhesion. And then once I'm satisfied with how well it's spread out over the tank, I just give it a little squirt of plain water there and I rub it in my fingers in with my fingers. That's not really necessary because I, I end up sanding this thing down anyway because I'm that's just the way my brain works. I can't leave it. Yeah, I can't leave it. But so I really didn't need the water step. The water step is good if you're not going to do anything once you put it on there. But um, I did smooth it out with my fingers with water. And then, of course, I came in with the DA and got it close. And I know it, it'll never be right without using Bondo. And that's OK. I think I'm OK with it keep telling myself it's okay it doesn't need to be bonded yeah but then I went and went ahead and you'll see later on in this video that that I, I can't just leave well enough alone I can't just paint it black and, and walk away from it I can't just touch up just the spot that I fixed and walk away from it I got to paint the whole tank yep 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 because that's the way my brain works so there you go <laughs> but if this was going on a bike that's going back on the street, I would have done the welding a little differently. I think I would have laid it in a little um, lighter, and I certainly would have spent more time with a, a grinder smoothing things out and, you know, Bondo and whatnot. What's not? Um, or I just would have gotten a new tank, right? But, I mean, what fun is that? I don't, I don't really know where I'd find this tank, <clears throat> honestly, and I didn't even look, but... I figure I've got it. The tank structurally is in really good shape. It's just now cosmetically it's going to be a little ugly, but it's I think it's better looking than it was. Uh, so yeah, so we work this stuff on. It's got, I think, a five minute, if I'm not mistaken, this stuff, you've got about five minutes to get it, set it and forget it. And then I, I let it set overnight. Um, I think you can start sanding it within an hour is what it says, you know, cutting and sanding on it. But I had other things to do. This was just a a quick in and out in the morning and um, I left it for 24 hours which is fine and blasted it with a DA so uh, we'll see how things go so I hit the epoxy with the DA I got about 90 percent with the DA as far as I wanted to go and then just kind of doing the compound curves of this tank I figured I'd do it by hand it probably would have been pretty good with a sanding sponge but I don't have any at my house I've got some at my shop and I just didn't feel like driving out there to get it for this tank so I'm just kind of feathering the edges in a little better by hand getting those curves those compound curves better I'm actually I'm actually relatively happy for a sawmill I put probably way too much time into it but it's fine it's fine I think it looks cool you'll see the finished product here <laughs> uh, get everything wiped down again I cut my finger there um, I don't even remember what I cut it on oh I jammed it in a piece of glass that's right and it was bleeding pretty good, so I just put a little masking tape on there. It's fine. It's fine. Got the tank all wiped down with rubbing alcohol again for about the third or fourth time. And that's actually what reminded me about the cut on my finger, that rubbing alcohol let me know that, oh, yeah, hey, buddy, remember? So I put some tape on there on my finger to stop the bleeding, too, because the alcohol seemed to make everything. You see, there's a dent there in the front of the tank. I, it's, it's, it's fine. Those are those little brass, I, you know, I can't move very well with that tape on there, so I pull it off and I'll just deal with the burn. And we're going to tape off the pet cock holes. Right now I'm taping off those barbed fittings for the equalizer fuel tube. Pretty, pretty straightforward. You see the inside of the tank there is really filthy dirty, but it's fine. Again, I'm not putting paint on the inside. I'm not doing a color change. 
so I'm not worried about it. Um, and again, it's a sawmill, so it is what it is. So I'm going to leave you with a musical outro. I'm going to leave you with the paint stage process, uh, the three-step process that I did to just use up spray paint that I had in my inventory. I appreciate you guys watching. Got to go, got to run. See